Hey there, welcome, it's Donna here. I'm so excited to share these nature-inspired Christmas ornaments. They're definitely gonna get you ready for the Christmas season. For this first project, I'm gonna be using either a wired jute cord or I've got this like paper wrapped wire in a nice dark brown cord. Either one will work. I know you can get this stuff at Dollar Tree as well, at least a jute twine covered one. You're also gonna need some mini pine cones. Now I have foraged these. These are hemlock pine cones. They're nice small size for some smaller crafting projects. I've got that foraging video for you linked down in the description box for you to check out if you are interested. I'm just setting these onto my craft mat here in a circle formation. I am creating a little mini wreath. And the reason I'm doing this to start off with is because I needed to know what size I need to cut my wire down to. So like I said, I'm gonna be using this particular one because I like that it was already a nice dark brown. So I'm going to actually cut it once I've got the shape and the size figured out, I'm gonna cut it so that the two ends will go end to end. I am gonna be using some hot glue to attach those two together and I'm going to just do that right now and then I'm going to just take my fingers after a few seconds and seal that all off. Now I am going to be adding some more adhesive at that joint. Once I put this down I am actually going to apply some hot glue onto the pine cones and I'm going to put this first one onto that joint that I had created. That will help to hold everything into place. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add my hot glue and attach the pine cones all the way around and what I'm also doing is kind of interlocking the pine cones so that they can stay all nice and snug together and there's no gaps in between. So I've added my last pine cone there and my, <laughs> my little wreath did stick to my craft mat a little bit. So I was able to get that up though, but as you can see, you can see that hot glue. So I'm taking a blow dryer and I'm going to just soften that glue up just a little bit. Some of it I'm just kind of pushing down and then I do end up having to go in and trim some of it off. I'm just be care being careful not to remove too much because I don't want those pine cones to be popping off on me. So that cleaned it up really nicely, but you could still see the hot glue and I did not like that. So I decided to go in with a paintbrush and some burnt umber craft paint. And I'm going to just dab some craft paint over all those globs of glue. Now you could back this with a bit of felt or something, uh, but I decided I just would try out the craft paint and I actually was really happy with the results. Now I did have to go in and seal coat it with some matte clear spray, spray paint because it could chip off over time. Now to create the hanger, I'm just gonna use some jute twine, but of course you could use some ribbon or some yarn. I love the way jute twine looks, especially for nature crafts. Just wrapping that through the whole of the wreath, bringing the two tails up, and I am going to be tying a knot right against the wreath. I'm just tying a basic knot. That way here I can get my string to be facing the right way to create my hanger. And then I'm going to take the two ends and just tie those two ends together with a knot. And then you can just trim off the excess and it's ready for the tree. A set of these would make a wonderful gift. I grabbed these wood slice ornaments from Dollar Tree, but you can get these anywhere. This is a set of three in about a three inch size. So what's nice about these is that they already come pre-drilled and you also have some jute string to create your ornament hanger. So that's always nice to have. So I did measure them because I was curious to see if they were actually three inches and it turns out not all of them were. I had one that was two and a half inches and then three inches. I'm using some Cricut printable iron on and I'm going to just put it straight onto the natural wood, but of course you can paint it. I am in Cricut Design Space and I was looking for some printable cutouts that I could use for my wood slices and I wanted it to be a Christmassy a nature scene or a winter scene. So it's really important to pick the print and cut option 
and then that will pop up all the different images that you can use. Now I am using the Cricut Design Space membership and on the images, if you click on the three dots on the top, you will get a whole bunch of different images that are similar to each other. And those are all print and cut options that I am showing you right here. And again, I'm just choosing some wintry nature scenes for my ornaments. This is an option that you can, or feature you can use on the computer. So I chose four designs and I duplicated all of them because I wanted to maximize the space on my sheet. But here you can see I've duplicated the three and here I've got all the different designs set out on the preview and I printed them out on my computer and they turned out really well. So to use these, you just need to peel it up. I am using my little pick to get underneath the edge to lift it up and then you want to just gently peel it back. You don't want to peel back too hard because you don't want to stretch the image. So I've got my wood slices here all on my heat press mat. And I'm just trying to figure out what, which one would look best on which wood slice. I like this one. I'm going to preheat your wood slice and then you want to go ahead and then put your image onto the wood slice where you would like it. It is going to cover up the hole, but we will be correcting that after we're done here. I put my heat safe paper on and then I'm going to go ahead and follow all the directions on the heat guide on Cricut's website. I have to say this is one product I have been absolutely loving to use for different craft projects. It is so much fun. So I'm going to do the other side and again all the same steps as before and I will also be doing all the same steps for all three of my wood slices. Okay, so here are my three designs that I went with and I'm just taking a poking tool and just poking through the hole and I used my weeding tool at first, but it wasn't thick enough. So I went in and I am using a bamboo skewer and that cleared the way so we can put our little string in there for our ornament hanger. Really liking how the image actually kind of blended in a little bit with the background of these ornaments. I did give them a clear coat of some matte spray just to help protect the image for a long term and now I'm going to put my string on through the hole and again I'm tying a basic knot at the top of the ornament and then I'm going to create a loop and tie the two ends together. And there we go. We've got a beautiful set of some nature inspired Christmas ornaments. I'm going to be using some burlap fabric for this next one. This is two and a quarter inches wide and I got it from burlapfabrics.com. I made a tail and I'm going to pinch it and then I'm going to give it a twist and then I'm going to create a loop, pinch it in the middle and give it another twist. I'll be creating another loop, pinching it in the middle and then I'm just going to go ahead turn around, create my other tail. Now, this is how I make my bows. Uh, this is how I was taught and I really like that technique, but of course, feel free to make your bows any way you would like. I'm using some wire just to help secure the center and I'm going to trim it off. Now, be careful not to trim it off too much because you do want that to hold before we carry on. So I'm just pressing the wire down so I don't stab myself with the excess wire. I have got some jute twine here and I'm going to wrap the center of our bow with the jute twine and that will cover up the wire but I'm also leaving two nice long tails tying it in a knot at the base of our center of bow with the bow and then I'm going to take those tails again create a loop and tie a knot at the top and you've got your ornament hanger. I thought this would be the easiest way because I did need to cover up that wire, but of course, feel free to make adjustments as needed. 
So I've got my pretty bow here and we need to decorate it. So I've got some faux Christmas greenery. I've got some that's flocked here and I'm just gonna cut some pieces down. Of course, this is a great project to use all those little bits and scraps of Christmas greens that you may have laying around or little berries and picks. So I'm just gonna figure out my placement and then trim things down as needed. And then I'll just use my hot glue and start to glue things into the center of our nice little bow. I thought having a collection of these all over a tree would be so beautiful. It would definitely have that country farmhouse look that a lot of people love during the Christmas season. So I have my selection of mini pine cones again. I'm going to use uh, some hemlock ones, but these ones are aspen or sorry, alder. And then these ones are actually cedar. So I have not used cedar ones before and uh, before last year. And last year I decided to collect some to try them out. And I really, really like them. So I'm going to just grab some of these pine cones and then figure out the placement before I glue them into place. Uh, that's just something I like to do, but of course, feel free to do it any way that you would like. And then if you don't want to use pine cones, some little flowers would be a pretty touch as well. You could probably even use some dried flowers for this. If you did, I would definitely make sure that you uh, maybe seal them a bit just so that they don't crumble apart on you. I have another option. You can use seed pods from flowers. These ones are actually from a succulent. And I picked these two years ago and they're still holding up really well. I decided to add just a few sprigs here and there because I wanted that touch of brown color that matches the pine cones really, really well. I just wanted to add a little bit throughout my little arrangement that I'm creating. Using these pip berries that I got from Dollar Tree, they are a nice small size. Uh, some bigger ones would work as well. I'm just deciding on what color I wanted and I decided to go with these darker ones. Uh, the red would have been, or the bright red would have been pretty, but I didn't want that red to stand out that much. I'm trying to keep it a really nice natural look. So I'm just going to snip some of these off and some of them I'm even leaving a little bit of the wire tail and just very carefully I'm adding some some hot glue and I'm going to add the berries into place. Now if you have a precision glue gun then that will make this a little bit easier but I'm just using what I have here. So now I'm just going to create a dovetail on each of the tails um, and then it is ready and like I said a bunch of these on a tree would be absolutely gorgeous. Let me know what you think. Dollar Tree had these felt flower kits and I thought they would be so beautiful to turn into Christmas ornaments. So what I'm going to do is just show you how to put them together together here. I'm not going to use the yellow flower because I didn't think it really went with the whole Christmas vibe. So I put that one aside, but this kit came with some instructions. They're already pre-cut for you, which makes it so much easier. But of course, if you have like a Cricut machine or some other type of die cutting machine, then you can get patterns for them that way. So some of these were attached still here and there. So I'm just taking my scissors and I'm going to snip through those spots where the felt was still attached. So I'm finished prepping this first flower. And again, the instructions are all on the back. There's no wording, but it shows some images and most of them are pretty good. Uh, I did have to go online and see how to figure out how to put some of them together, but this one was pretty basic. You just roll starting from the outside edge and you roll it in on itself. And then the little flap there, you're going to be covering up the end, but you need to use some hot glue at the base. And then you're going to add that little flap there to cover it up and fluff up your little flower. And then you've got a pretty little decorative element for your ornament. 
So as I mentioned before, I am setting the yellow one aside, but I am going to be using the leaves and this yellow strip, there's two of them there. Those are stamens for a couple of flowers. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the other ones together. They're all pretty much the same. You're just rolling them in on themselves. And then there is one that you can see at the top to the left there it's got petals that one you do put together a little bit differently but for the most part you can see you just roll them together and then use your hot glue you can even add dabs of hot glue along the way to help hold it all together So for the stamens, this material was actually really stiff. So what I decided to do was just go ahead and fold it in half to start. That way here, it kind of broke it a little bit. So it was a little bit more pliable and flexible. And then I, it was still not holding its shape. So what I ended up doing was using some hot glue just along the edge and started to glue the two edges together. Now, when you do this, you want to be careful that you're not gluing the cut edge or like you can see that there's like little slits on the one side. You do not want to glue those because those are the little flower centers, the little stamens of a flower. So again, I'm going to be using some hot glue as I roll along that will help to hold it all in place. You just want to be careful not to add too much glue because otherwise that will add quite a bit of bulk. I have this all glued together and I just put it down and then just flattened it out. Now I'm fluffing it a bit just to help spread out those little flower centers or stamens. So this one is going to be going with this white flower. So to do these ones, you can see there's a slit in the middle of the petal. You add a little bit of hot glue and press those two center edges together. And then you're going to do the same process for each petal. Add a little bit of hot glue on the edge and press those two center pieces together. Once you have those petals all glued together, you want to glue the two ends of the last two detached petals together, just like you see me doing in the center. And you're going to do that with all three pieces. Now Dollar Tree had some other kits that had some different material. I don't know what was all in there and I can't remember all the colors. This one was my favorite. I knew I wanted to turn this one into a Christmas ornament. So now I'm going to glue all the petals together and you want to add some hot glue in the center and then offset them to create a dimensional flower. Once you have all those pieces layered, then it's time to add the little stamen. So I'm just going to again add some hot glue on the bottom and press that into place and you got a pretty little flower. There did end up being a lot of hot glue strings in this project, so you're going to need to melt those using your blow dryer at a later point once you're done all the gluing. I'm using a branch as my base for my ornament. I'm just going to trim it down and I like a branch that's got a fork to it. I find that it just adds a lot of character. So um, I'm just trying to figure out which way I want to use my twig. Once I've got that figured out, I'm going to figure out the placement of my flower. So I'm just going to work on a flat surface here and put them into place. I'm also going to be using these pretty little leaves. There was one thing I do wish is that these leaves were perhaps a different color. I have painted felt before and I kind of wish I would have painted these a different color, but I'm just going to live with what I have. So I'm going to start gluing all the flowers into place. I'm starting off with the larger ones. I add some glue to the back, put it into place, and you want to figure out the touch point between your flower and your branch before you commit to gluing, because you want to make sure you're adding your hot glue in the right spot. So then you are getting contact between the glue and your branch. So I am adding all the flowers first. You can go in and add a little bit of hot glue here and there as needed. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my leaves. So I'm just going to go ahead and just 
put them anywhere. I don't think I put them in the exact same spot that I had laid them out. I had a rough idea of where they were. Sometimes what I like to do is once I have a placement all figured out before I commit is I will actually take a picture of it and then you have a reference of how you have everything laid out. But even then, sometimes I end up making some adjustments as needed. So I know you're probably thinking, wow, that looks really springy. Well, I will be adding a few extra touches to make it look a little bit more Christmassy. One of those is adding some Christmas greenery. Now this is a pretty flocked type and it had a little bit of green, uh, sorry, glitter on it. I did pick this up from Michael's a couple of years ago. I like to get some Christmas greens like this and then a, a nice large bush for a discounted price when I'm at Michael's and then you can just cut it down and use it for the different projects that you create. Next I'm also going to be adding some cedar pine cones. Yes, I'm going to use those little pine cones. I thought these would be perfect for um, this project. They are nice and small and they fit into those little spaces and add that Christmassy look. So I was still not fully happy with the look of it. It still looked quite springy. So like I said, if you maybe if I would have painted those leaves a different color, it would have helped, but I'm just going to make do with what I have. But I just wanted to add one more touch to this and that is to use some glitter paint. This is glimmer paint that I get from uh, it's Deco Art. It's their, the Deco Art brand and it is the ice and it is a nice fine micro glitter paint and I love to use it at Christmas time. It doesn't make a project look too sparkly. It just adds just a nice touch here and there. Now I decided to do this after I had glued everything into place. So you might want to do that after or before um, you glue everything to play into place. It just made it a little bit easier to paint then because I did add some to the leaves. So for my hanger, I'm just tying jute twine to one end of the branch. Again, I'm just using a basic knot. Now you do not want to glue this into place at this time. And I'll be showing you why here in a minute. I'm just figuring out how long I need to cut that. And then I'm going to tie it on on the other side as well of our branch. Again, another just simple basic knot. So now I'm going to just trim that off and I'm going to lift the two tails up and you can see how nice and straight that is hanging. And if you want to make adjustments, you want to turn those knots that are tied onto the branch and that will help you to hang it a little bit better if needed. Now I'll show you the adjustment I made and it no longer hangs straight. It is kind of flopping back a little bit. So I went back in and I adjusted it back to where it was so it hangs properly. Once you do that, you can tie the two tails together. Again, I'm just going to tie those two in a basic knot. And then you can go ahead and add your little bit of hot glue to help to secure those knots onto the branch. Now this branch is a branch that I had foraged just on a walk here by my house. I will have all those foraging videos for you down in the description box below, but I am absolutely loving this Christmas ornament. I think it's so, so pretty and I can't wait to hang it on the tree. This video right here is packed full of ornament inspiration you do not want to miss out on. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know your favorite project of the day is, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.